thank you, and I'll see how much I can get done in about an hour and a half, two hours. If there's any questions while I'm painting, I don't mind if you um, ask them. Uh, but I'll just think I'll just get stuck into it and see how I go. When I look back, I get a little blinded, so I'll, I'll just try and focus on here. <clears throat> okay. I thought I'd do... I was t uh, not sure whether I wanted to do an interior or a street scene or something, but I thought I'd go with a street scene in the end. Actually, this is the... Um, Harbour View Hotel. That's the stru uh, structure that you've probably all seen on TV or at some stage. That's the bottom of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Um, I'd rather like it for the, uh, the triangles that it will create. Okay. I, I like to use uh, rags just to keep my brushes nice and clean. Let's see how we go. Okay. It's always wise to get some of the biggest shapes in first. Just try and work out where they're going to run. Remember some of the first sort of street scenes I would do, I would start on the small shapes and try and work out and end up with this line sort of crooked or in the, in the, they're not lining up. And, so it's all looking for the biggest shapes. I was actually in Sydney to do some teaching and I thought I'd take a, a small walk around just to find some local scenes to paint. And this was the one that I sort of stumbled across. Just working on a bit of a duck cotton canvas. to call the skeleton shapes. Sort of, it's funny, I've only been painting four days in a row, teaching four days in a row, helping with about 15 paintings plus my own, but it's still nerve-wracking. <laughs> you, you never lose that, unfortunately. And I think the day that I do, I probably should look for another job, because then it's not as exciting. So <laughs> you want to live in that moment and try and enjoy it as much as possible. It's a small little figure there. Little motor car there. You'll notice they're parked on the wrong side of the road, <laughs> facing the wrong direction as well. Doing cars is relatively easy. It's really just a couple of rectangles. We have most of the popular sort of international cars. The important little vanishing points will be this shape here. ones will be that one there. These, uh, there's quite a few sort of um, vertical shapes here which I'll just have to simplify. This is a window, doorway, almost like another window which is glass and then there's another one so I'll just aim to put this one in here. Street scenes, interiors, they do take quite a bit of drawing just to understand where the main shapes are, are going to go. That's pretty close there. I've got my little guide there as well, so but I, I do prefer to work from this. That's more just a, a uh, if I get in trouble, sort of uh, go-to line. My favourite thing to do is just to wipe out whenever I uh, don't like a particular mark. Instead of trying to paint over it, let's get those lines a little softer. Okay. Bring that in. There's a lovely stream of light coming in there as well. I may even just take that up a fraction higher because I, I don't want too much up there. So that's about all the little brush will do. And I'll use a, a um, size 12 um, hog hair or bristle brush. Let's go for some of these darks. You just hit that. As I go up higher, I might just grab a little bit of a 
cadmium red. It'll be just a little more forgiving <coughs> up in these strong shadows. So important to get some, with oil paint, to get those great quality darks in early and straight away. I'm not sure if it's the sunlight that we have in Australia that drives a lot of our artists to paint sunlight, but it's um, a bit of a national obsession, I think. Uh, okay, so it's a window here, door there. Keep working with big shapes. Actually, the, the name that's just...